One of the most recent films I did in America was about the, the rap scene in Florida, where it's quite difficult to have a conversation that's not about money, right? <laughs> in fact, to carry a huge wedge of, 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 of dollars or like $100 bills like that and press it against your head is one of the cliches of the genre, right? You literally will have uh, jewelry around your wrist, around your neck, designed to advertise how much money you have, and a great icebreaker, should you find yourself in Fort Lauderdale or Miami interviewing a SoundCloud rapper or a gangster rapper, is, um, oh, I love your jewelry, like how much did it cost? And, and they'll be very happy to tell you, and the, com you know, I was, a, you know, I was 100 Gs, I don't even know if Gs is the right term, forgive me for my slang. But, um, and the conversation will pr proceed very smoothly from there. And I think in America in general, probably, uh, the money conversation is less taboo, right? I think that it's interesting, but only up to a point. And I think it's interesting in so far as other people find it interesting. It's interesting, once you, you know, once you have enough money, right, then it becomes a source of relief. You have the freedom to not really worry so much anymore, right? To not worry about whether you're going to make your rent or be able to pay your bills. And, you know, there are decisions that then take place about how you make sure you don't lose your money, what you do with your money, what portion of that money you should be um, donating towards good causes and otherwise, how much you need to set aside for your family. All of those are very personal decisions and probably worthy of a program in its own right. And certainly like a, a, a responsible company that could advise you on how to make those decisions, that would be a brilliant <laughs> idea. But um, I think for me, for me, it's like it's a measure and, and talk to Stuart after the presentation. Um, for me, it's about, uh, I, I'm interested in me metrics of, um, of, of, of how people consider what's important in life and, and metrics of, you know, what's interesting to me is like, if Nile Rogers says he has 500 million, but he's not happy, right? He seemed very happy, by the way. <laughs> and, 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 and stresses and the psychological issues that come along with, you know, positive and otherwise, that come along with the decisions that go with having a lot of money. I, you know, so my tip for listening, we were talking a bit about this beforehand, is, is, is just to find some, something that you're interested in. But it's very hard for me to advise on that because there's a sense which it comes so naturally to me. Like, I just like hiding. I like the feeling of invisibility that you get when you're talking to someone and they're just downloading whatever's in their head. Does that make... And when I, again, this may be too much information, but... When I was growing up, my big worry was like, oh God, I don't think I'm very interesting because I don't have opinions about anything and I'd much rather listen to what other people have to say. And you know, that's changed as, as life has gone on, but I genuinely do find um, other people's perspectives fascinating and, and I do find that the world's such a strange and in many respects a lonely place and that by, by finding someone and connecting with them and realizing that in unlikely ways you can, you just find, you just, sometimes it takes a little work, but with a little bit of digging, you find, oh, the person's recently gone through a divorce or they're bereaved or they were an orphan and they were adopted. And, and there, there's some fascinating part of life that you get to and, and, and that you can learn from and that makes you feel a little bit more at home in the world, really.